Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutt of HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is Saturday the 12th of June 2021 and we have a little bit more to talk about today as the Eastern Pacific starting to get a little bit more active as well as the Bay of Campeche, Southern Gulf of Mexico area. We now have Invest Area 92L down there to talk about. So let's get on with it, shall we? First, they look at the National Hurricane Center with our two features in the Eastern Pacific. High chance of development with this one, but don't worry, it'll be heading out to the west with time. Cooler water out there, more negative conditions await. So even if this does ramp up in the next day or two, it will die out almost just as fast. Then to the east, we have this system over here, and it's related to the overall pattern with our system up in the Bay of Campeche, which I'll show you in a moment. That is Invest Area 92L. The main thing with this is it's going to bring showers and thunderstorms, heavy rain over portions of Central America and Southern Mexico through the next several days, and so that could be a big problem. Remember, torrential rain is an impact. It's not as uh, eye-catching or whatever in terms of headlines as wind and storm surge. I get it, but heavy rain can be very, very deadly. All right, so in the Atlantic side, or at least the Atlantic Basin side, obviously the deep tropics, nice and quiet. Most of the Caribbean is, well, all of the Caribbean is subtropical Atlantic as well. But then we get over here, and this is our Invest Area 92L. And just real quick, in case you don't know, you hear that often, what, you know, 92L, 98L, what is that? Well, the Hurricane Center gives these systems, when they are of interest, a number, 90 through 99, and then they start over again. And the letter L for Atlantic in the Eastern Pacific, it's E for Eastern Pacific, W for Western Pacific, and actually it's AL92. We just shorten it as weather geeks to 92L. I guess we're lazy or something, but that's what that means, 92L. And you get to assign computer models to it, specifically floater satellite images, task uh, reconnaissance, flights into it, you know, whatever. It's just a way to keep up with what's what, a systematic way to keep order as we get these disturbances developed. So 90 through 99 and the letter L for Atlantic. So here it is in the Bay of Campeche with about a 40% chance of development over the next five days. Looking at the satellite, you can tell there's not much in the way of deep thunderstorms with that system yet. Let's use a different color so it shows up better, this darker blue, there we go. So not much way in the in, in uh, not not much in the way of deep convection, and even over here in the Gulf of Tehuantepec, not much there either. Some shower and thunderstorm activity uh, between this system and the one that's got a high chance of development. Overall, and let's just look at this together as a big package. That is your signature of the more favorable pattern that we've been talking about: the Madden-Julian oscillation coming through more upward motion fanning out of the clouds, divergent flow in the upper atmosphere, more moisture in the lower levels, air coming together at the lower levels, what we call convergence. And that's that pattern. That's that window of opportunity trying to take shape down here. Wanted to point this out. Interesting little atmospheric river, uh, kind of late in the year for that. Cold air aloft up here, low pressure coming out of the Pacific into the Pacific Northwest. It's a cry and shame. We can't get this to come further south so that our friends in Southern California and elsewhere can get some moisture. Look at this dark color, it just turns black. That is heat, because this is an infrared satellite image, and you actually see the lack of cold, basically. Those are warm temperatures that show up there, and I mean toasty. All right, so let's move along here and take a look at the vorticity signature. This, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the key to this whole thing. How much do we get all of this energy to bundle and before we talk about this area, real quick, you can see some energy out here in the deep tropics in the Atlantic. There's 10 degrees north latitude right through there. So these are fairly low in latitude, but this energy will migrate west over time and maybe bring Trinidad and Tobago and maybe the southern windwards as a whole, some inclement weather as these tropical waves pass through. But it's a little early in the year yet for these to be developing, but they are there. So back to this. This is the area we're going to be watching mainly the Bay of Campeche, because I think that this has the best chance of developing and becoming a bigger impact system than anything out of the Eastern Pacific. But like I said, we do not want to discount the fact that the disturbance in the Southeast Pacific there near Southern Mexico can bring a lot of heavy rain. And that's going to be the pattern around that area 
over the next few days. A slow, progressing system, not rapidly in any kind of a hurry to get going. So just keep that in mind if you have interests in Mexico. And it's not just the Pacific side. This disturbance, back to the satellite imagery just for a second, overall this area down here just unsettled. So heavy rain in parts of Central America and Mexico. But this is really going to be the key. Let me zoom in on it for you. You can see the vorticity kind of getting more concentrated there uh, on the Bay of Campeche side. And then a little bit here with a few lobes of it scattered around in the southeastern Pacific. But this is what we're going to want to watch very closely because the more that this can focus that energy and bundle it up, the better organized it will be. And this layer of the atmosphere, 850 millibars, is again my favorite part right there is what it says, the relative vorticity because this is the fingerprint that I watch for. And you can see it in the model guidance as well. This is the, as well. This is the GFS. Uh, here it is at the initial hour down in the Bay of Campeche. There's the system near the Gulf of Tehuantepec. This is the overall circulation pattern down there, that uh, Central American gyre, if you will, and a few other players. Here's the subtropical ridge at the lower levels and a tropical wave trying to move in here from the east. Uh, and then a trough, big broad trough up here over the Atlantic, uh, Northwest Atlantic and the Mid-Atlantic states, kind of cloudy, inclement weather up in my neck of the woods. And so those are the different players on the GFS. Let's move this out into time. And it's interesting because if we go out to 24 and then 48 hours and stop there, look what happens. The GFS taking this and increasing that vorticity fairly quickly, you know, by 48 hours, by Monday morning, it really starts to ramp it up, losing any signature or definition in the southeastern Pacific and trying to focus it there on the Bay of Campeche side. So Monday, let's look at this graphic. Of course, we will. And we'll look down here and we'll see, does this look more amped up? It, you know, and that's not a meteorological term, but does it look more pronounced? And it'll be very easy to spot that. And then by day three, 72 hours out, I'm going to tell you something, just looking at this, if... And that's a big if. The GFS is right about this. There could be a tropical storm by this time, or at least a depression, by day three down in the Bay of Campeche. These systems, you got to remember, and I was looking back through history, some of these systems in the Bay of Campeche can be kind of small geographically. And they don't take up much real estate, but they're there, and they can ramp up very fast. They can also fall apart very quickly. So do not be shocked if by Tuesday... All of a sudden, we have a named storm in the Bay of Campeche. Now, that's not a forecast. That's just looking at the guidance and saying, hmm, you know, look at what the GFS is showing there by day three. You know, that's a telltale sign. And remember, we've seen systems in the past that have developed rather quickly because of their small geographic size. Their aerial extent, as we call it, really can focus that energy. And make no mistake, the water temperatures down here are close to 30 Celsius. And I've seen some interesting things happen in the Bay of Campeche, so don't be surprised if we have Bill by that time period. I mean, look, seven to eight hours, 84, it kind of gets buried down there into Mexico uh, as high pressure builds to the north, kind of like a big hand pushing on it, if you will, squashing it down to the south. It cannot gain latitude towards this big bubble of heat that's developing over here. So it gets stuck in Mexico. And by uh, day five, it tries to pop back out as this area of high pressure up here. It's like a big balloon, you know, ebbs and flows, inflates, deflates, moves, changes shape, whatever. Subtropical ridge over here to the east. It's just kind of stuck. But one of the interesting things about this at day five, look at all these competing areas of vorticity. You know, a little piece of here over the Yucatan even. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the key. It really is. Does it look like that at day five, or is it more focused and bundled and larger? And we'll just have to see. I don't know how the models are doing this year for tropical cyclogenesis just yet. Fancy way of saying, are they picking up on development? The Euro was pretty bad last year. GFS was a little bit better. And it's a different year. They tweak things. You know, you don't have the same algorithms and physics going in every year. The models evolve too. So we're going to have to wait and see. It's going to be an interesting few days ahead for sure because the more concentrated this is 
and I know this is like from the department of the obvious, but the more concentrated this is, the better chance it'll be uh, stronger, you know? And I know that goes without saying, but that is what we can look for. We can see it in the modeling, we can see it on the vorticity signature, and of course on satellite. So now looking at the Euro, let's just move it out to day five and see what it shows. Similar overall in that there are competing areas of energy, uh, just a large area of disturbed weather, nothing really showing up as being robust, but I know you think well, five days out, that's probably what's gonna happen. That's an eternity, it really is. That's five days from now in something that's very precarious to begin with. It's a complicated setup overall. It's not like one of these tropical waves that comes off Africa where the heat and the energy is all there and it's either got favorable conditions or it doesn't. We still have this overall large gyre of energy sitting down here over the Pacific into the Bay of Campeche area tangled up around Central America it's complicated you know you see that wasn't that a Facebook status you could put sometimes about relationships it's complicated that is the best way to describe this situation down here so stay tuned I don't know what's gonna happen yet we'll figure it out together yes you folks along the Gulf Coast up here you know it's hurricane season you definitely want to keep an eye on it from Texas to the Florida Panhandle because nobody knows the outcome and you can have a big heavy rain event with some onshore flow, a couple feet of surge, uh, or, you know, could have a category one hurricane. Why not? It's hurricane season. Nothing is ruled out. So we shall see. All right, I'll talk about it each morning as I've been doing since about May 15th on our podcast. I appreciate our back end folks helping me to create this graphic. Um, you know who you are, so thank you. I finally got to show it. It's called Hurricane Season, the podcast. Hurricane Season, the podcast, and it's available, just like it says, wherever you get your podcast, each and every morning, usually between 8 and 9 a.m., it pops up in your feed, uh, your podcast feed, and it's just a quick digest of what I'm looking at for the day ahead, and then when we get to the Hurricane Outlook and discussion here, I go into more detail. So subscribe to the podcast. It'll grow. It'll get more interesting as the season progresses, I'm sure. you got to start somewhere. And it began May 15th, hurricane season, the podcast, give it a listen, uh, usually just a few minutes long. And then we jump in here and do this in the afternoons. Speaking of afternoon, have a great rest of your afternoon. As always, thanks for tuning in and giving me your time and attention. I appreciate it. I am Mark Sutteth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.